Hi there, folks. Today we're looking at simplifying radicals with variables this time. So we're going to throw some variables into the mix. And uh, there's one thing that we want to think about first before we start all of this. It's kind of like a little disclaimer. Uh, this is by no means the most important thing uh, as uh, that goes along with simplifying uh, radicals that have variables. But it's one of these little nuances that uh, comes up a little bit later. Uh, it's not important for for uh, what we're doing right now, uh, but it's something that explains some of the things that maybe happen later in mathematics, okay? And so as we look at something like this, it says, consider the following. Uh, if I have the nth root of x to the nth power, the idea here is that the nth root and the n power kind of cancel each other out, and we kind of already knew that, all right? That's not news to us, all right? If we think about our good buddy Irmdas, we know that addition and subtraction cancel each other out. We know that multiplication and division cancel each other out. And right here, we know that exponents and roots cancel each other out. And that's what we're seeing here. Exponent and root cancel each other out. But the thing that kind of is, uh, is strange here uh, is when we look at the next one, uh, you see they cancel each other out, but then all of a sudden we slap the absolute value around the x value, okay? And the difference is this. If we're looking at something like this, if n is odd... We don't have to worry about this, okay? But if n is an even value, if we're talking about an even root, all right, uh, then we have to then we have to slap absolute value around this. And uh, we only need to do that if uh, the the value that we get at the end is not going to be positive all on its own, all right? And that seems like a very strange and arbitrary thing for me to say. Um, but when you look at something like this guy, we don't know if x is going to be positive or negative at the moment. That's why it needed the absolute value. And the idea is, is this. Um, if we kind of look at this from the perspective of numbers, so if I kind of looked at this guy, we could immediately say here, like if we kind of went that route of canceling these things, like the, so the cube root and the third power cancel each other out, so the value here is 3. Okay? And if I did the same thing with the next one, the the... Uh, sixth root and the sixth power cancel each other out, so this is four. And then if I did the same thing here, the square root and the second power cancel each other out, so this is negative two. As we look across at these, one of these ends up being wrong. It ends up being incorrect when it's all said and done. Um, if we were to kind of break this down in a couple more steps, if I said, okay, the cube root, well, three to the third power, uh, that's a 27, and the cube root of 27, well, that is a three, okay? Uh, here, 4 uh, to the 6th power, which I don't even know what that is off the top of my head. Uh, 4,096, of course. I, I don't know why I didn't know that one. But if I did the 6th the root of 4,096 on my calculator, it does give me a 4. So, indeed, these first two are correct. But then this, this last one, if I were to actually do negative 2 in parentheses squared, it gives me a positive 4. And the square root of positive 4 is actually a positive 2, not a negative 2. Okay? And so that's what makes this thing wrong, okay? The idea is that, you know, this thing ends up being positive when it's all said and done. And if I had slapped the absolute value around this, well, then my answer would be correct, okay? So it's this little stipulation of if, if I'm taking an even root, all right, the, the answer has to come out kind of as positive, okay? Because the even root, I'm, I'm taking it away from an even exponent. And that even exponent's going to make the thing positive. When I take the root, it's going to give me a positive answer, okay? And uh, the, the fact of the matter is, if I have a negative number underneath, I can't take uh, an even root of that or I get imaginary numbers, okay? And so this stipulation exists just to remind us that in something like this example, if I'm taking that little shortcut of, hey, these are going to cancel out, I have to make sure that the answer is positive, all right? And we discuss that now because when we're dealing with variables, we don't know if they're going to be positive or negative, all right? So we use that absolute value to ensure that they're positive, okay? And so if I look at something like these guys, when I'm doing roots of these things, I am just going to divide the exponents. And if you remember your rules of exponents, which we'll review in a little bit more detail down the road, uh, but those rules of exponents, remember, exponents are always doing something different than the operation, all right? Just as a refresher of rules of exponents, and again, we'll go into this in more detail later, 
but when you add, uh, the, the exponents stay the same. When you subtract, they stay the same. When you multiply, you add the exponents. When you divide, you subtract the exponents. When you raise it to a power, you multiply the exponents. And now with roots, all right, when you take a root, you divide the exponents. So something like this guy, if I did the cube root of x to the 15th power, that's just x to the 5th. I divide the exponents, essentially. And you can think of that cube root. This is almost like a version of an exponent out here. Okay. If I look at this next one, again, the square root, there's a number written out there. I don't see it, but I know it's there. Remember, when we don't write a number, it's assumed that there's a little 2 there. That's what the square root really means. And so, again, if I divide the exponents, that's y to the first. So there it is. And I don't need to write the 1. Uh, the next one, I divide the exponents. That's y to the seventh power. Uh, this one, I divide the exponents. And once again, there's a little 2 here. I can't see it, but I know it's there. And so I divide the exponents, I get x to the eighth, and I get y to the second, okay? But now here's the thing, I, I put a, a box around that first one, all right, maybe I jumped the gun on that a little bit, but I need to decide, well, do I need absolute value here, okay? And it goes back to that rule that, you know, if I have an even root, all right, I have to start thinking about absolute value. So this first one, I don't need absolute value because it's an odd root, okay? It doesn't apply there. The next one, I, I had an even root. So the question is, is y to the first uh, power, will that necessarily be positive? And the answer is, well, we don't know, so we slap absolute value around it, okay? That's that little stipulation, okay? Same thing here. I have an even root, so I need to think about absolute value. And I look at y to the seventh and say, okay, yeah, do I know if y to the seventh will be positive or negative? And the answer is, no, I, I don't know, because it's a variable, it's an unknown, so I slap absolute value around it, okay? If I look at this last one, this last one is the one that really gets students because, as I can see, it's an even root. But when I ask the question, so the even root, I, I, I need to worry about absolute value. If I ask the question, is x to the eighth going to be positive or negative? Well, the answer is it's going to be positive. Okay. If I ask the question, is y to the second power, is that going to be positive or negative? Well, it's going to be positive. Okay. See, because it's x to the eighth power, anything to the eighth power is positive. It's y to the second power, anything to the second power is positive. So the question of will this be positive or negative is already answered. It's going to be positive. Do I need the absolute value if I already know this thing's going to be positive? Well, no, I don't need the absolute value then. See, I needed the absolute value with y to the first because I don't know if that'll be positive or negative. Okay? Y to the seventh, I don't know if that'll be positive or negative. But y to the, uh, x to the eighth, that's already positive. I don't need to worry about it. Okay? Y to the second, I don't need to worry about it. Okay? So if you have an even root, we need to think about absolute value. Okay? But look at the variable and say, hey, will that thing be positive no matter what? Or do I not know? Will it be positive or negative? If you're not sure, we need the absolute value. If you can be sure that it's positive, you don't need the absolute value. And an easy memorization way to do this is if you have an even root, but it produces an odd exponent. See here, even root, the exponent gave me is a 1. Even root, the exponent gave me is a 7. Even root, it gave me even exponents. So the only ones that needed absolute value were the ones that had an even root but produced an odd exponent, even root, odd exponent, okay? And that's just a quick memorization way to, to kind of do this, all right? Again, it's about making sure that the, the even root produces a positive. Well, some of these don't need my help to be positive, okay? And now, uh, you know, we've gone over the absolute value thing. Uh, I will ask you perhaps to, to kind of state when we need that, but most of the time we're going to go the route of assume all variables are positive, okay? Assume all variables are positive just means don't worry about putting absolute value, all right? So let's take this a step further, all right? We just talked about we divide the exponents, right? Well, what if they're not divisible? What if the exponents aren't divisible by the root? How do we do this? Like right here, 5 is not divisible by 4. It doesn't divide evenly, okay? 17 is not divisible by 5, okay? And so when they're not divisible, we have to break these things down in terms of things that are divisible. So, like, if I were to look at x to the fifth, all right, I need things that are divisible by four. So maybe x to the fifth, I break down to the x to the fourth times x to the first, okay? And that's the same thing as x to the fifth, all right? But what that allows me to do is say, hey, I can divide this one. When I divide that one, I get a one. But now the square root of x to the first, well, I can't really do that. I'm going to leave it as x to the first, okay? And this is one where we technically need absolute value around this guy, okay? So if I told you, uh, hey, 
do I need absolute value? You would put them there. If I said assume all variables are positive, assume all variables are positive, we just leave our answer like this. Okay? If I look at the next one, same kind of thing. 17 is not divisible by 5, but you know what is divisible by 5? 15. Okay? So this is y to the 15th and y to the 2nd. Okay? That's the same thing as y to the 17th power. Okay? And so now I divide this one, so that's y to the 3rd. The y to the second, it can't really do anything with that, so it stays under that fifth root. Okay? And then if I look at this last one, the 8 works, right? Because this is a 2. I can divide the 8. That's x to the fourth. But I still have the y to the third, and that one can't be divided, so I break it down. y to the second and y to the first. Okay? And so now this one I can divide. So that's y to the first. The other y is still trapped, okay? A nice little shortcut that I like to use here is I revert back to like elementary school division, all right? Back before I knew about things like fractions and decimals, when the world was simple, okay? And so when you divided way back in the day, if I said, hey, four divided by five, if I asked that to an elementary school kid, if you said, hey, how many times does four go into five? What's five divided by four? They would say one with a remainder of one, okay? That's what they would tell you. They, they'd talk about it in terms of a remainder. That's the easiest way to do these. Watch this. 5 divided by 4 is a 1, so that's an x to the first, with 1 left over. So that's another x to the first, but underneath. And look, that's my answer. Okay. Oh, although I apparently dropped my little 4 the last time. Okay. Same thing with the next one. If I asked an elementary school kid, all right, or if I asked you, uh, thinking like an elementary school kid, what's 17 divided by 5? Well, you'd say, well, 5 goes into 17 three times, right? So you would say, okay, y to the third. Uh, but it would go in three times with how many left over? Well, it would be two left over, right, Mr. Jansen? Because, yeah, 5 goes in there three times with two left over, so I'm going to put a y to the second underneath here. And look, isn't that my answer? Same thing up here. I would say, hey, look at that 8. Well, 2 goes in there evenly. That goes in 4 times, so I do the 4. And then I would say, okay, how many? Uh, what is 3 divided by 2? How many times does 2 go into 3? Well, 1 with 1 left over. So a y to the first with 1 left over. Notice the, the, the division and remainder are giving me my exponents on the outside and the inside. Okay, That's the way I like to approach this. And yes, once again, that's the same as my answer. I think that's the easiest way to do it. Okay, is to think of it like elementary school division, uh, divide and remainder. Okay, how many times does this go into this? This many. That's the exponent on the outside, and then the remainder is your exponent on the inside. Okay. All right. So if I kind of tie all this together, all right, I'm going to put some numbers in here with the variables, and let's see what happens. So again, this is a square root. There's a little two here, and maybe that's uh, worth noting. And so what I do is I just deal with the variable, or sorry, with the number separately, and then I do my factor remainder thing, okay? And so for the variable, uh, I just leave them for now, and I focus on the number. So 8, are there any perfect squares divide evenly into 8? The answer is yes, it's a 4 and a 2. And then again, I just leave these guys because I'm going to do the divide remainder thing, okay? And so here I say, okay, the square root of 4 is a 2. So I put a 2 out here. And now I'm going to do the, the variables. Ready? There's a little 2 on the outside, okay, right here. So let's divide 6 divided by 2 is a 3. So that's my, vari that's my exponent on the outside. Without any left over, that divided evenly, okay? So that one's done. I took the, the square root of that guy completely. And now this one, when I try to take the square root of this guy, maybe I'll circle in a different color here. If I said, hey, 5 divided by 2, you would say, well, 5 divided by 2, that's, uh, it goes in there twice. So that's my exponent on the outside. With a remainder of 1, that's my exponent on the inside, okay? And now as I look at this radical, there was still one other thing that was left on the inside. It's the 2, okay? And so maybe I clean this up a little bit. Ready? And that's it, okay? So I deal with the number the same way I've been dealing with the numbers, but now the variables, I want to divide those exponents. And a nice trick for this thing is to say, hey, let's divide the way we did back in the day, all right? This goes in this many times, so how many times does that go in there? That's my outside exponent. What's the remainder? That's my inside exponent. And so if I look at this guy, this is a cube root this time, so watch out, cube root. 
Are there any perfect cubes that divide evenly into 81? All right. And you might have to go consult your perfect cube list or make a perfect cube list. Okay. The, the correct answer is 27 goes in there. It's 27 times 3. And again, I leave the variables the way they are because I'm going to do the divide remainder thing. And then I say, okay, the cube root of 27 is a 3. And so I write that 3 down. Okay. And then I say, okay, let me go move on to this guy. If I were to divide, sorry, I don't like the way that, yeah, let's do green. 7 divided by 3 is 2. Okay, 3 goes into 7 2 times, so that's my exponent on the outside, with a remainder of 1. So let me draw my cube root. So with a remainder of 1, so I'm going to put one of the x's. I wrote y like a crazy person out here. Okay, so divided, it was 2 with a remainder of 1. Okay, and see, that's my exponent on the inside. And I do the same thing with the, the y value here. Ready? 10 divided by, uh, sorry, divided by 3 is a uh, 3, so it's y to the third, with 1 left over with a remainder of 1. So that's my exponent on the inside. Okay? And so now the other thing that was trapped still under there is the 3. And now let's just clean it up a little bit. Okay? So I deal with the, or the uh, number the same way I've, I've been dealing with numbers. But then the variables, I just divide. Okay, how many times does this divide into that? That's my exponent on the outside. What's the remainder? That's the exponent on the inside. Quick and easy. Okay, and again, the reason I like doing it that way is because eventually, I know it looks scary right now, but eventually, you'll be able to do this whole thing in your head and go right to here. Eventually, you might be able to do this whole thing in your head and go from here. I, I don't have uh, high expectations for the cube roots or the fourth roots, but the square roots, many of us will be able to do that in our head at some point if we start to adopt some of these methods, okay? If I look at this guy, once again, I'm going to deal with the numbers the same way I've been dealing with the numbers. The first thing you notice is a negative, and you already know how to deal with a negative. Remember, that's an i, so I put an i on the outside. I'm going to bring that guy down here. And then the 12, I can break that up. That's 4 times 3. Again, the variables, I just kind of leave the way they were. And I say, okay, the square root of 4 is a 2. It's going to join my i out here. Uh, and then as I take the square root of this guy, I'm dividing. Remember, there's a little 2 on the outside right here. Okay, 9 divided by 2 is a 4 with a remainder of 1. And then 11 divided by 2 is a 5 with a remainder of 1. And see, that's where I get these exponents. And then the other thing that's still under the square root is the 3. Okay, And then, again, I'm just going to clean it up a little bit, make it look a little nicer. I've got my i. I'm not pleased with that i. It was a little too loopy for me. Okay. Oh, yeah, I like a nice little long tail on my i, okay, for my banana peel i. Oh. And then the x to the fourth, y to the fifth. And really, in terms of cleaning it up, I'm just getting the spacing right. Because sometimes I'll leave too big of a space there because I want to show the stuff outside and the stuff inside. Okay, And I don't have to write those exponents of 1. If I look at this one, same kind of thing. That negative 3 is out here. As soon as I see that negative on the inside, all right, when I take the square root of a negative, that's an i. And now let's start breaking this thing up. Okay, 50, that's 25 times 2. And then that's x. That's just x to the first y to the 15th. And now I start taking the square root. The square root of uh, 25 is a 5. So as I write that out here, now i got a 5 out here. Copy my i down. Um, as I move on to the variables, if I look at this guy, I, I can't really do 2, uh, 1 divided by 2, okay, in elementary school speak. Really, that's just going to be a remainder exactly the way it is, so x to the first here, okay? And then the 15, same kind of thing. Uh, I do the divide remainder. 15 divided by 2 is a 7. So it's y to the 7th with 1 left over. So my remainder is 1. And then the 2 was also left under the, the square root. Notice, see my spacing's a little off. I have some things to simplify. So here, ready? That's negative 15, i, y to the 7th, and then what's left under the square root. Okay. So again, when we're dealing with variables, we just divide the exponents, okay? And a great way to do it in terms of what goes outside, what goes inside, think about it as divide and remainder, okay? 
divide the exponent by that root, that's what you get on the outside. How many times does this go into this? That's the outside exponent. The remainder is the inside exponent. Okay? If I look at these guys, all right, some higher level roots here. Uh, this one, this the fifth root of two, I, I can't break that down any further. So I'm going right to dividing these exponents. So right here, 12 divided by 5 is a 2, so an x to the second, with uh, 2 left over. So an x to the second out here. The next one, 5 divided by 5 is 1, so I put a y to the first out here, with none left over, divided evenly. And then this guy, I can't even begin to divide that if I'm thinking about it from that elementary school perspective. Okay. So that z to the second stays underneath here. And then, of course, it still had the 2 as well. Okay, So that's how this thing simplifies. All right, And I like ending with a couple of these higher-level root questions only because you get to see that division remainder thing uh, in a little bit more detail and get a little more practice with it. Okay, And then this one, a cube root here. Uh, so once again, I'm going to break the number up the same way I've always done it. Perfect cubes that divide evenly into 32, that would be an 8. Again, consult your list if you need to. I just leave the variables the way they are for now. And now I start taking the cube root, ready? The cube root of 8 is a 2. So I already had the negative 2 out here. Now I also get a, a 2. Uh, the cube root of x to the second, I can't really do a divide remainder thing on that. So that's my leftovers. That guy stays underneath here. 25, uh, the cube root of 25, uh, y to the 25th. Again, I'm dividing the exponents. Uh, 3 goes into 25 8 times. So that's a y to the 8th out here with 1 left over. So y to the 1st underneath here. Okay, And then the z to the 7th. Again, divide the exponents. 7 divided by 3 is a 2. So it's a z to the 2nd out here with 1 left over. So a z to the 1st underneath here. And then, of course, the 4 was under here also, and now I just clean it up. Okay, And so, again, I just think about the numbers separately. I simplify those uh, the same way I've been doing it. But then the exponents, I divide the exponents. And an easy way to do it in terms of outside, inside, Okay, I divide however many times it goes in there. That's my outside exponent. The remainder is my inside exponent. Okay.